All right, welcome back to the Gill Athletics Track and Field Connections podcast. Uh, it's Halloween. I don't know when you're listening, but uh, we published here on Halloween, and I was going to make some wisecrack about wearing a costume. I'm actually really big into Halloween now, and so tonight, uh, while you're listening to this today, tonight I'm actually, uh, I've got this gorilla suit now thing so I can scare the kids. I'm pumped, man. Um and I'm really more pumped about today's guest. So let's hop into it. I've got the head coach for cross and track at beautiful Dakota State University. Help me welcome the wise, the wonderful Mr. Anthony Dreeland. Anthony, how are you, sir? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Happy Thank- Halloween. Happy Halloween. Exactly. <laughs> the, the magic of podcast uh, uh, um, recordings, right? You never know when it's actually <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I don't know you well enough that I can't make a wisecrack about your costume being worn today. So I'll just, we'll just go skip right over that. But, uh, Anthony, I am excited for you to be here today. You know, we like to reach out to coaches around the country at all different levels. And at Dakota State, your NAIA, uh, that excites me. It's one of the levels I actually didn't coach at. I coached at high school, small D1, and then uh, Power 5. Uh, and so I did a little bit of club summer coaching, which God bless those people. I, I just can't do that. Uh, and so I'm always interested in just how different people do different things. And so just excited to kind of delve into you know how you got into this coaching thing and how things are going at Dakota State today, man. Absolutely. I'm excited to to go over some of that. Yeah. Share my, share my uh, experiences. Awesome, man. Well, I always tell people your story matters and and I know we're, you know, we're, we're pre, we're going to get into this, but it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, this is one that will, um, you'll, you'll learn stuff from it, from this for sure. I think everybody we can learn from. And so I'm excited to, to jump in here on Anthony's story. So Anthony, why don't we kind of, I don't know, get in our way back machine, you know, assuming that you were an athlete uh, some, at some point in your life, coaching became something that you can, that you actually thought of like, Oh, actually I could become a coach instead of just something that happens to you. Where does coaching kind of start coming into your life? Uh, college. And so I, I, to go back even further, I ran a couple years of cross country in high school and, and track and um, ultimately really didn't even know if I wanted to run in college. Uh, but my high school cross country coach uh, ran at Dakota State University as well and encouraged me to check it out. And so long story short, I did. And I really, I really, you know, found a lot um, of, of uh, uh, you know, great things about running, you know, that, that applies to all, all of uh, all of my life, which, you know, people find that in sport anyways. But anyways, along the way, when I was in college here at DSU and really in enjoying my running. I was going into education, knew I wanted to work with people and be a teacher. One of my college coaches, um, uh, Trent Mack, uh, he, he said, Hey, you know, Anthony, you have the personality and and interest in, in running and and the training and, and all of that sort of stuff. You should really think about coaching. And that's about when I was a sophomore junior and that really sparked the interest and it it really grew from there, you know? So it's, it's funny how, how that works. You're in, you're in a sport and you're heavily involved in it and it still took some one saying, Hey, maybe it's something you should think about. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, that, that's interesting, actually, what you just said there, because I think about other things, you know, we, as we grow up, we're into comic books and baseball cards and astronauts. And we don't realize sometimes like, Oh wait, like actually someone gets paid to be at NASA. Yeah. Someone gets paid to write comic books. And until someone maybe kind of comes along and says, Hey, you know what? I know you're really into comic books and you're like a really good artist. Have you ever thought of like maybe making that your profession? And like, Oh God, no, I haven't. I thought I was supposed to be a doctor or a yeah, banker yeah. <laughs> or whatever. So I like that. Now, now something interesting you said there about Trent I, and you know, we've done this, this is episode number 179. So we've had 178 other coaches on here. And while my memory is not as good as maybe it used to be, I don't know that anyone has ever talked about a coach or mentor or someone in their life that said you have the personality to be a a track uh, cross country coach. A lot of people will say, hey, man, you really love track. You ever thought about being a coach or, hey, you're really good at the science or the biomechanics part of this thing. Like you you ever thought about being a coach? What do you think he meant about the personality of being a track coach? That's that's interesting to me. Yeah. You know, I'm 34 now. And so I'm, you know, probably 14 years removed from this conversation. So, you know, who knows how my memory uh, remembers things. But if I if I look back and think about it, I think it was probably 
probably the way that I interacted with my teammates and my friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as you become older within a program, you have brand new 18 year old athletes coming in who, you know, don't know what to expect and, and just, uh, are, are people that, you know, are looking for guidance. And, and that's something that me and my teammates, I think really enjoyed doing. And we, we had probably different approaches to it, you know, and, and, and anyways, I think that's probably something, um, that he, you know, noticed is, you know, how we would, you know, try to mentor young athletes and take them under our wing and encourage them and, and find out, you know, what they want to accomplish. And, and so, um, that's, that's something that, you know, kind of rings in, in my head, you know, as, as, as I look back and, and I was always interested in, you know, Hey, why are we doing this workout? What's the reasoning behind this and, and that sort of stuff. But, uh, but really, yeah, just the, the aspect of, um, being interested and invested in, you know, my teammates and have an empathy for them and, and, uh, an interest in them probably. Um, and again, that's my bias probably speaking now as a coach, but that, but that's what I think. So <laughs> you're like, I was really awesome as a leader. That's why he wanted to do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just excellent. Cause, Cause I love, I love hearing that. Cause when you say that, you know, I think of it more globally and I'm like, well, man, that's exactly the type of personality as, as maybe Trent used the word back then, uh, that, I, that we want here in our business here at Gill and, uh, uh, the head lab uh, scientist at a lab would need for his, you know, his crew and things like that. Like that's, it sounds like that's just another way of saying leadership. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. You know, and, and there's, there's a lot of different successful ways to lead, I think, you know, and, and everyone's personality is a little bit different. Um, but it was, it was, it was, it was something that, you know, he probably viewed that I, I did have an interest in my teammates more than just us beyond being successful, but, mm -hmm. you know, invested in them wanting to improve and get better too. And, and I think it came a little bit from, you know, just my own, my own mental, you know, journey and, in, in running and, and, uh, just, from a standpoint of as a, as an 18 year old, not really even sure if this is something that I enjoyed to kind of turning a 180 mm -hmm. and really working hard at it and finding a lot of, um, passion for it. Uh, you know, and, and so that's something that, you know, you, you kind of find what you kind of find what you're interested in and passionate about. And, and sometimes you, uh, you know, that's, that's all you want to talk about, you know, with uh, your friends. And, um, so, uh, that's probably part of it too. <laughs> Yeah, I created a whole podcast around that. Talking yeah, to my friends. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate. I don't want to skip over this. I appreciate that openness you just said there. Let me make sure I heard you right. You came into college going, yeah, I don't, because you mentioned earlier, I, I didn't even know if I was going to do this in college. Yes. So running wasn't something initially that was like, you know, some people it's their whole personality. Speaking of that personality word again, right. It's our whole thing. You know, we, we love it. We, we read runner's world every day. We read track and field magazine. We, every Twitter account, it, it sounds like, like maybe it wasn't that for you at the beginning anyway. No, it, you know, when I was in high school, I had some great coaches and great teammates and people who were encouraging. And I just didn't put as much into it as I wish I did. And that's everybody, you know, goes through and has regrets in, in what they did. But that was a big part of it is, is I had, you know, nerves and anxiety going into races and just, you know, wondering why, why am I doing this? And, and a big reason was I, I hadn't really figured out how to, you know, invest myself fully into it. And I decided, you know, just, uh, you know, after, after a senior year of cross country, you know what, I'll, I'll give this college running thing a try and I'll, I'll see how it goes. And, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to harm me to, you know, give it a, give it a go. But before I headed into DSU, you know, the, the typical 18 year old is so worried about, wow, this is college running. I'm just going to, you know, absolutely be demolished. I actually started to take myself, you know, in my training more seriously. And that was, that was a big, big changing point in, in a lot of aspects of my life just because it was like, okay, I'm actually putting in the work to something and investing myself into it and committing to it. Mm. And, and that's something that, you know, it really is interesting. It transfers to other areas of your life. And, and I found, I found, you know, this is something that I really enjoy and, and love doing, you know, because I've put the time into it. Um, and, uh, and obviously, you know, I'm now coaching athletes, uh, you know, even, even from a standpoint in high school where I was unsure if I'd continue running. Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're all a better for that you took that chance, right? I mean, you easily, you know, you, you didn't have that fear of failure. You're like, all right, I'm, I'll give it a try. And kind of, I'm sure you had maybe had some conversations to back your head of like, all right, well, if it just doesn't work out, yeah. well, at, least, at least I'm at a good school and I'll get a great education and yep. move on. And you said you, you knew you kind of wanted to go into teaching and education uh, component of it. So in that junior year, when Coach Mack said, hey, have you thought about coaching aspect of it? 
what direction did you start taking with that? If anything at all, like where you continue on with your degree or did you start paying attention more to the coaching side of, of track? You know, early on, uh, you know, after kind of having that conversation and that seed spark, it was something uh, um, where, you know, I started just thinking, okay, what do, what do I want to do? You know, do I, do I simply, you know, do I want to be in, in the high school coaching realm of things? And, and so it, it was kind of a, a process of like thinking that over. And um, at the, at the time, uh, by that time I had started dating my wife who we met as freshmen on the uh, cross country and track team. So you start having a significant other that maybe is going to play into your life too, you know? And so you talk over, you know, future goals with, with that individual as well. And, and, uh, and she's, you know, been just awesome and super supportive of, of all of this. Um, but, but eventually it came to a point where it was like, I think that there might be an opportunity to, you know, volunteer here at DSU, work on a master's degree um, uh, in uh, uh, um, human performance and physical education and, 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 and just try to break in that way, you know, and, and as you know, like that's, that's a lot of the routes that, uh, you know, uh, college coaches take is, you know, uh, you know, just finding their way in somehow, you know, and, and so that after a year or two is something that became my plan and, and really, you know, what I was striving for and shooting for. Yeah. We don't really have a, like a clear path, right? If someone says, I want to be a coach, you tell them, well, yeah. okay, go coach. I get, I don't, if you want to be a doctor, go to medical school. You want to be a lawyer, go to get your JD. Um, you know, if you want to be an accountant, you go take the CPA exactly with coaching. Yep. It's like, all right, uh, go help someone. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's how you start. Right. Um, wh- where did, you know, I'm always fascinated with people who want to become teachers and coaching is just a different way to spell teacher in in all reality. Yep. Where did that come from? Parents, teachers? uh, Did you have impactful teachers in middle school, high school? Where where did that kind of, hey, I want to be a servant because that's what teaching is, right? I want to be a servant. I want to help others. Where, Where does that come from? Yeah. Um, well, my mother, uh, my mother was a, a teacher for a long time. So I had that influence. Um, my, my dad, <laughs> my dad was a CPA, uh, you know, uh, as you uh, mentioned, so, uh, uh, or, or, or reference CPAs. And so, um, but he was a, he was an individual who, uh, was, was a terrific teacher, you know, in, in his way, you know, the things that I learned from him and, and my mom. So that, that's, you know, that's, I can't, I can't, um, diminish the influence of, of uh, my parents. Cause, cause that was huge. Uh, but, but as I got into junior and senior, um, of my high school years, I, you know, you start thinking, what do I want to do? And, and, and I found that I did enjoy, you know, working with people and, and, uh, and having an influence on them. And, and I had a really, really strong interest in history. Um, and so I thought, well, this is, you know, this is something, that I'd love to, you know, teach and, and pass on too. So it, uh, it's, it started from there and, and, uh, obviously grew as I went through college and, and, uh, and, um, you know, and got into the coaching aspect of it. So let's go there. What, you know, like I said, we don't have a direct path to be a coach, right? You get a degree and heck, some of us, I, I don't, I didn't have a degree for a while. I had to get into coaching to get a degree. So it's not necessarily the first thing. And you can have a lot of different degrees. Uh, uh, what did you end up getting your degree in? Yeah. So my, uh, my undergrad ended up being a business education major. Um, yep. And, uh, and a minor in computer education. And so, uh, that, uh, that was a path in itself, you know, but, uh, but honestly, it's, it's something that I, I really, really enjoy, you know, and, and is something that is, is actually applicable to what I do, you know, the, all the business aspects of, Mm -hmm. um, you know, my degree is actually pretty useful in, in managing a program and budgets Mm -hmm. and those sorts of things too. So, uh, and then just your personal uh, life too, you know, that's, that's something that I really am glad I went into. See, you want to be a college track coach one day, just a major in business and minor yep. in computers. There you go. It's the path. Right? I'm, yep. sure, I'm sure that's how Boo and Dan Path and all yes. the other guys and gals, that's probably how they did it as well. So what did you do? Did you, you said, um, I, I lost track a little bit. Did you volunteer after you graduated or graduate assistant? What'd you do for your first, like, okay, I want to be a coach. I got to go coach. I am a very fortunate and I feel very lucky and, and fortunate, you know, for, for everything, for all the opportunities that I've got at Dakota state and, and, and have been here, you know, since 2006 as an athlete. Um, 
But as I graduated in 2011, uh, my plan was to volunteer uh, here. Uh, I was going to work overnights at a uh, plastic manufacturing place in town um, and, and help volunteer coach. And uh, my distance coach, the head cross country coach at that time, um, what for my senior year and, and right after that was uh, Mike Nakuda and, and great coach, ran really well under him. And then the longtime head track and field coach was Buzz Stevenson. And he had been here for 30 years. Um, so I was going to volunteer, you know, under both of them uh, at the, at DSU. And long story short, you know, um, in the middle of the summer, uh, Coach Nakuda gets a great opportunity coaching elsewhere, and he takes that opportunity. And and so Buzz, knowing that I was going to be volunteering, says, "Hey." would you like to, you know, apply and, and try to be the distance coach? And so I was super lucky to be an assistant coach right away, working with these distance runners that I was, you know, going to help out, but, but be really, you know, in, in charge of, of managing their success and, and their progress. And so I was, I was very fortunate and lucky and, and, and very appreciative of, of that type of opportunity because so many people are volunteering in the GAs and, and I was able to kind of work right into an assistant position right away. So, um, very, yeah, it was, it was awesome, awesome, uh, opportunity. And, and I was lucky uh, to be in the place that I was in a lot to unpack there. Cause you said something that really piqued my interest. Did you actually, you said you were going to work overnights at the plastic place. Did yeah. you actually work midnights, midnight? Yeah. Shift? So I, I, I got about uh, three months of that oh, job wow. in and, and then, uh, um, and then, and, and so that was during the summer months. And, and then, so obviously as I got to a full-time position here, uh, I, uh, I didn't do that after that, you know, so, um, uh, and I actually enjoyed working there and, and my, uh, supervisor there was, uh, um, a great person to, to work for too, but obviously I, I had the opportunity of what I was searching mm. for. So I was fortunate. <laughs> So what my first coaching job was an assistant at the high school level in Chicago. And then the next year I was uh, lucky enough that the head coach retired. And so they gave me the head coaching job. And so to spend as much time as possible, you know, it's, you, it's, you got to spend more time at the school. I wasn't a te- I didn't have a degree. So I wasn't a teacher or anything. Uh, I, I started working midnights. I was a security guard officer. <laughs> we didn't have a gun or nothing. Thank God. I, we didn't have a guy. I didn't have right. a that would, that would not be good for anybody. Uh, but at this really, really large hotel in Chicago. So I'd work 11 at nights till seven in the morning. Wow. Sleep for a few hours, drive to the high school coach for several hours, come back, nap, dinner, get to get back to the, it, it was terrible. I mean, it's God bless people who work midnight shift. Yeah. It's, it's amazing what you do though, to, to do the things that you want to do, you know, and, and that's the type of stories you hear all the time, just like yours. It's you, you're willing to do it, you know, especially when you're, you know, young and ready to get into it and, and everything too. It's, it's amazing what the human mind and <laughs> will put themselves through. Yeah. I can't think of any other thing I, you know, using that accountant CPA, like who says, you know, I really want to be a CPA. So I'm going to work midnights at the plastics factory yeah. so that I can, <laughs> I can come in and intern at, yep. you know, Steven's <laughs> Lido in in Barnes yep. law, law firm to you know, be an accountant or whatever. Like no one, no one. There, I can't no. think of another single thing but coaching. Yep. Man, yep. that's amazing. That's amazing. It is. It is. So another thing that you brought up there that I think is extremely interesting. So you went from undergrad one day, uh, you know, June 1st, August 1st, you were essentially the coach. Is that yeah. right? With yeah. the same with the same team. So the kids yes. that, the kids that you were teammates with hanging out, yep. doing college teammate stuff, you're writing workouts and directing workouts within three months. How yeah. did that transition go? It was, it was surprisingly really, really good. And, and I, you know, a lot of credit to, to these teammates of mine who, you know, put their trust in me and, 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 you know, I, I definitely had to prove that, you know, uh, Hey, you know, we're doing what's best for you. And, and this is why we're doing it. And I'm always willing to, you know, be, be talking about training specifically and, and, the, and all these different types of things, but they were, they were phenomenal, you know, and, and, you know, when you're, when you're at that young age and, and you literally just ran with these individuals, you, you have that, that hard 
you know, that hard transition of saying, Hey, this is the relationship that we have now. And, you know, it, uh, it, it is what it is. And, and there's, you know, kind of a, uh, some give and take there for sure, but, um, it, it went really well. And, and I, I owe a lot of credit to, to these athletes who, um, you know, did a, did a great job of saying, yeah, like this is, this is, uh, this is my coach now and it'll put some trust in him. And, and, uh, hopefully I, hopefully I earn that and everything too. So, um, but yeah, that's, you know, that's, a that's, that's definitely a unique, <laughs> a unique aspect sometimes of the, this type of a profession and, and uh, the college coaching realm. So, so you realized fairly early, like maybe even from day one, like, Hey, I have to have a different relationship with these kids. You know, I, yeah. I, I realized last weekend I was playing Xbox, maybe having a drink with them all over 21 uh, yeah. to now it's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we just can't do that. That's not the that's not the, the, uh, I don't want to say relationship, but you know, it's not the, the way we're, we have to carry the relationship forward. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's, it was, it was, it was, um, hard, but not hard in the sense that I knew that this is what I wanted to get into and as a profession. And I, I obviously had this mentality and mindset of this is the type of relationship you have to have as a coach with your athletes. And, and it's not that you don't, you know, care for them and, and, you know, want to be a, a, a tight knit group, but you, you, you cannot do your best job of coaching them if you have this really loose, you know, uh, uh, you know, type of relationship. There's a professionalism aspect that comes with it. And, and again, a lot of credit to my friends you know, who became my athletes that I coached is they did a, they did, did a great job of that, you know, and after a few years when they graduated it, you know, could go back to more of a, you know, that friendship. And, and so that, that was, you know, that was even while coaching them, there was, you know, just a unique aspect to it, but um, it was, it was something that I realized that I, I wanted to make sure that, Hey, this is, this is how we need to interact. And, you know, what you knew of me, uh, you know, as a college uh, a friend and teammate is, is not uh, gone you know, and you, you know, uh, the, the choices that I made, you know, but, um, you know, now, now I'm going to coach you to the best of my ability and try to help you run fast and be successful. Yeah. I, I worry about the, the athlete who becomes the coach more than I do the athletes, you know, the athletes can band together. They get new freshmen, like, you know, they, they still have a group together. Yes. You as the athlete that transitioned to the coach, you know, on Friday nights, maybe you guys were used to hanging out, like I said, playing the Xbox or going yep. to the movies or whatnot, whatever you, whatever you youngins do out there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to now Friday night, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm by myself. I, yeah. You know, most of your friends are typically on your team. So it's like, all, all those guys are gone for my yeah. hangout time. I, I worry about like the isolation of the, of the new coach. Yeah. And that's, that's a very, you know, uh, an interesting point. And I think, I think that, you know, it wasn't something I thought about, you know, too much beforehand, but then when you're in it, it's like, yeah, this is a different, you know, life and, and, uh, uh, of what you choose, but, but you also, you know, also when you get to, I think, you know, 22 and 23, a lot of, a lot of athletes are really excited, you know, for that next step in their life and pursuing the professional, um, world too, but, uh, not, not everybody, you know, teachers and coaches, you know, there is this, um, uh, you know, there's, they're, they're in this, um, position where they're working with, you know, either high school or elementary students or even college students and athletes that you're expected to, you know, uh, uh, to, to have a sense of professionalism, you know, and that's not always, you know, the same, uh, across all professions. So you, you, you kind of know what you're getting into, uh, but, uh, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely weird, but I, you know, on that same note, I think that every student athlete, you know, that is competing in college has a transition in the sense that it's tough when you're done with your college athletics. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, that was something that certainly I missed and, and, uh, and, you know, it is uh, a tougher transition, you know, uh, the friends aspect and just the competitive aspect, mm -hmm. that's, that's not easy, you know, and, and that's something that um, you don't really realize until you're at the end, <laughs> how tough it can be. So I was not a college athlete because I was terrible. Uh, so I don't have that experience. Are you talking about like on Saturday mornings through cross country season for four to five years, you were used to going to a meet and competing yeah. and then it changed to where it's like, oh, I'm no longer competing. I'm helping others compete. There was a right. little bit of a struggle there. Yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, and, and us runners have a little bit.
you know, the basketball players, the football players, you know, the, the volleyball players that is kind of just cut off, you know, for those athletes, especially, but even so, you know, even though I trained for a few years, uh, you know, at a decent level running wise and, and was running some races, it's just not the same as going to the meet with your teammates or, you know, waking up Sunday morning and, and having your long run and, and you spend two hours running with your teammates. That is, that is the, you know, the stuff that I was talking about where mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's difficult, you know, even though you're really excited about this, you know, profession that you're in of coaching, it's, it's a different competitiveness feeling, you know, versus versus uh, the actually doing it yourself. Yeah, we had uh, th- this topic c- came up with um, uh, Charles Babb from Washburn University. <clears throat> and we were talking about, he, he was a, a really good decathlete who's now gone on to be a really great coach. And we were talking about the difference of coaching to an athlete versus coaching to a coach. And y- you're kind of bringing it up in a different aspect. I like it that, you know, as a, as an athlete, you know, there's a lot of selfishness. And what I mean by that is the coach is telling me what to do so that I, so that I can figure out how to run faster or jump farther, et cetera. When you become a coach, now every input that you have is, oh, well, how do I digest this and now turn it to the team? So there's, it's a whole different mentality of, okay, it is. this is what I'm going to do so I can go get faster versus, okay, what can I go do to get better so I can help other people get faster? That's a different competitiveness. That's a different internal drive. It's an inter- yep. a different way to lurk, look and learn about things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's out of your control. You know, when we get to race day, mm. I don't have control. You know, the athletes are the ones who are going to have to go and execute that race. And, and that's, that's different. It's just different, you know, than, than feeling that sense of um, control. And, and that was really appealing to me as a runner, you know, you, you have full control over your, your own success. And, Mm -hmm. and uh, when you're a coach, then it's, then it's not, you know, you, you realize that uh, you can prepare them as best to the best of your ability. And and it's going to come down to, um, you know, what they can do out there. But don't you think you want that control? Like, yeah, "Ah, yeah, (laughs) we we did all these workouts. Why aren't they doing this? I told them to go now or, you know. (laughs) Yep. Yep. And, and, and when you see an athlete, you know, they put the work in, you know, they've done these workouts and you can see what they're capable of doing. And you just want to try to, you know, help them and be able to get in their head and say, you can do this, you know, and, and, uh, it, it takes time for every person to, you know, kind of figure that out. And, um, yeah, you, uh, you'd love to have that control. (laughs) Uh, I think that might be a situation of be careful what you ask for though <laughs> yeah yep <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what did you do is you're transitioning now into coach and you know you're fully transitioned you're into a coach and you're coaching and it's different now you, you know you lost that control you're not actually competing on Saturdays and such what did you start doing as coach Dreeland did you uh, and what I mean by that is um uh, coaching education, uh, and, and that can be formal or informal, you know, maybe you called up people like, Hey, I, you know, I see that you guys do really awesome. I'm a new coach. Help, help me out here. Or, um, just, what did you start doing professionally, professional development? Transition? Yeah. 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 The, you know, um, right away, uh, for the first couple of years after I uh, graduated with my bachelor's is, um, I was working on my master's degree and, um, at the, at the time, you know, here at DSU, all of the head coaches t- taught a few classes. And so I was hopefully preparing to be that, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, become a head coach at some point, uh, and, and then be able to, uh, teach. And, um, a lot of our coaches here now are, are, you know, not teaching half time. I still fortunately am able to teach a few classes, which I really enjoy. Um, so I feel uh, fortunate to, to do that. But so anyways, I was working on my, um, master's degree, uh, an online program through Adam state university. I got to take one coaching class from Damon Martin, the, uh, oh, yeah. um, you know, awesome, awesome, uh, coach at Adam state, which was, uh, which was great. And it was online of course, you know, but you, you still glean some great information, you know, um, from a great coach like that. So that was, you know, that took up the first two years of, of, uh, my coaching, um, from a professional development standpoint, but then, you know, I was talking to a lot of my former coaches, you know, of people who had coached me and, uh, you know, the head coach here, track coach here, Buzz Stevenson and his years of experience, that was a lot of the things I was able to kind of bounce information off of. And, um, I had, even, even though I was coaching some of these athletes, there's a few upperclassmen that, 
we would still talk regularly, you know, like we did in the past, you know, bouncing training ideas off each other. And I had a few individuals that I could really trust as sounding boards and, and people who, you know, would, would uh, uh, have a sense of, you know, what's worked well for them and, and, and just even to talk things out. So I had some um, athletes that, you know, were my friends that, um, you know, we'd talk about those things too, and, and still continue that uh, even to this day. So that really kind of encompassed the first few years of, of my coaching as I tried to, you know, uh, uh, develop, uh, you know, who I was as a coach and what was important and those types of things. You mentioned another transition, actually, we haven't talked very much at all in nearly 200 episodes, you know, Buzz was your head coach when you were an athlete and now you're on his staff. That's yeah. a, another different relationship, right? You go from coach athlete relationship to coach assistant coach relationship. Yeah. How, how did that transition occur? It, it was great. And, you know, it was, it was, um, uh, I, he, so for a long time, he was, you know, one of the only coaches track and field and cross coaches here at DSU on staff. So he had done everything. He came from the high school realm of things, um, you know, old school, if you, if you want to say that, um, and had coached, coached everything. And in my, in my years of running here, then DSU added, started adding some, you know, assistant or head cross positions for him. So he wasn't coaching all areas of track and field. So, you know, because of that, he he, he gave me a lot of responsibility right away to say, Hey, these distance runners are your responsibility. You're going to design their training. I'll be here for you. And, you know, to be a, a supportive individual, but they're your responsibility. And then in addition, you know, he gave me some of the other, you know, things re with regards to coaching that you don't think of, you know, whether it might be, you know, lining up travel or, you know, all of those, you know, monotonous, you know, things that you never think about. So even in my, you know, first couple of years, I still had some of these things that I got to learn gradually um, instead of, you know, uh, uh, you know, being thrown full on into like a head coaching position or anything like that. So, so that was great. You know, he was, he was someone who was there as a sounding board, but he wasn't micromanaging, you know, what I was doing from a training standpoint. And I think part of that was due to, he was still coaching sprints and jumps and hurdles and, and throws, you know? So, so he said, Hey, I have a competent individual, I think who can coach a distance runner. So, so it was, it was a good balance there, you know, of having more responsibility, but having a, a sounding board and a person that can, you know, I can rely on for advice or, you know, and, and here's the other aspect of coaching too, when you have to deal with, uh, you know, a disciplinary position, uh, a situation, or when you have to deal with an athlete that, you know, maybe isn't, uh, you know, uh, um, progressing and, and, and how do you help them? How do you help them see, you know, maybe what they can do better or what their shortcomings are. That's the 35, 40 years of experience that he had. And, and me, you know, uh, just simply being an athlete that you don't know and you don't know what you don't know. And so that was, that was obviously um, something that uh, it was extremely helpful to have, you know, right here um, uh, while I started to, you know, uh, delve into this profession. I love the little caveat, the little asterisk. You said when Buzz was like, you know, I have this competent individual here, I think. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's like, the jury's still out. We'll, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. see how the year goes. <laughs> When you were, you know, you see you're coming straight from the undergrad into the coaching profession. And a lot of us as athletes don't really see what coaches do, right? We, we primarily see them on the track for our workouts or on the field for cross country and uh, our field events and such. And then, you know, we, I, we all know we get on a bus or a plane to go somewhere, but we don't really think about like someone had to schedule that. And we don't think about our uniforms and like, Oh, someone had to budget for that and order yeah. that things like that as you were. And I'm so proud of buzz for doing this. Cause I, I don't think we're doing this enough uh, with our coaching staffs and our younger coaches and our assistant coaches giving you responsibilities of like scheduling and budgeting, you know, starting to kind of bring you into that side yes. of it. But that had to be, I'm assuming that probably was something new to your thought process of coaching. Like primarily you probably thought 95% of coaching was right in the workout and yeah. administering the workout. Yeah. It's like, Oh yeah, that might be, maybe that's 50% because here's this whole other 50% yep. uh, with the recruiting logs and all this other stuff. What, what was your uh, reaction when it was like, Hey, so we need someone to do, I don't know, whatever the first thing he gave you scheduling. Uh, yeah. So you got to call these other programs up and say, Hey, when's your meet? And you know, when's when I need to schedule. Cause I got to book all this stuff. What, what was your first reaction to like, Oh crap. There's like the coaching size, maybe 50%. I got to do this, all this other stuff. 
Yeah, you know, and, and, and you you hit it right on the head. You don't really think about those things as an athlete. You're like, oh, this is where we're going for supper at this meet or, you know, uh, and somebody called ahead and say, hey, we're bringing 30 people, but you don't <laughs> think about that. And and so, you know, the, the first reaction is like, well, yeah, I'll jump in and, and I'll do whatever, you know, I need to do. But you start getting your eyes open to all of the things that a coach does in the day, mm -hmm. you know, that that you have uh, that you have no idea of. And 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 you should really start saying, wow, like there's there's some planning that goes into this mm. and you know we haven't even touched on meat management hosting a cross country oh. or track and field meet you know and and uh and 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 that's something that sometimes is kind of unique to our sport in that mm -hmm. we we really kind of manage our home events where it doesn't happen as much you know in the other uh, um sports as well and so it was yeah extremely eye-opening and and you start realizing you, you need to be well organized and have a plan and, and, uh, and, and really try to get ahead on these things. And hopefully year by year, I've been getting better and better at that, but it's, it's, uh, extremely eye opening And, and that's something, you know, you kind of noted with, with, you know, your assistants and how, how can you expect, you know, your, your assistants to, you know, uh, be able to make that transition to be a head coach if you haven't given them some responsibility. And I am, I will say, I'm not always great at that. I have my, I have my mentality. Well, I'm the head coach. Let me take these responsibilities responsibilities and but you, you you're not always doing a great service to your assistants if you don't say hey like this is something that we should learn and, and teach them how to do and and uh, and give that responsibility too but yeah absolutely eye-opening you know as a as a 23 year old you know uh, and, and and learning about some of these things well put a pin on that in regards to how you are doing because you're the head coach now so you know exactly we're transition yep. and ask well how are you doing what yep. we'll, we'll put a pin <laughs> on that and get to that uh, but i'm curious did you uh, did you as you were getting these new assignments and and not only the assignments that you got but you now got to see uh coach stevenson doing some things that you didn't know maybe had to get done was there an aha moment of like holy crap i had no idea we had to do x or man i just thought the showing up to a restaurant, we just showed up and they suddenly had seats for 30 of us. Was there ever like this aha, like, holy crap, didn't realize we have to do this as coaches. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even as something as, um, you know, it, it common sense in, in, you know, uh, uh, you know, even reviewing your athletes transcripts after the semester and saying, you know, where's a person that credit wise and things mm -hmm. like that, just, you know, I had no clue, you know, of, of something like that. And, and all the other things that we mentioned too, you know, those are, those are things it's like, wow, like that's, uh, uh, that's above and beyond what I would have thought of, you know, as a coach, you know, and, and, you know, I had a sense of, I knew we were going to be recruiting a lot. I knew we'd be working with our athletes and writing training. And, and you, you, I had no clue, you know, about some of these other things, you know, that, uh, that we've talked about. So it, it was kind of a, maybe a slow burn of like starting to pile on, you know, more of like, wow, there's a lot of things that uh, these head coaches and all these coaches do on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, uh, it, uh, it, you become to a realization of, uh, of, uh, the organization that you need to have uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Earlier I said, you know, we kind of primarily think of coaching as 90 to 95% of writing a workout and administering the workout. Maybe yeah. it's actually 80, 20. Cause we think, Oh, well you do have to recruit. Like for yeah. some reason, everybody understands like, Oh, okay. I'm going to have to recruit. Yep, they, yep. They don't also realize, <laughs> well, I'm also got the schedule and budget and uh -huh. uh, disciplinary and academics. We, we wear a lot of hats uh, yeah. as coaches, man, T too many in a lot of times. And, and you brought up that good one about the meat management side of like, uh, I, I, you know, here in Illinois, Brett Malima, he is not focused on, home games and security right. and where's the team going to come from and how are we going to do gate receipt no no no. he's worried about well what's the x's and o's and how we're exactly gonna this game. Yep. and he has this great support staff around him and on the track side we, we don't have that primary the, the majority of us do not have that we're trying to find officials we're figuring out schedules yeah. we're figuring out where the bus is going to park etc yeah uh, and, and even when the meet even when the meet's going on, you are, you know, constantly, you know, putting out fires, making sure things are going well. And it's, it's really funny. It's, it's really funny because, you know, that's the time where you should be coaching and, and maybe that's a lot of credit to, you know, preparing our student athletes well, that they don't need you like right over their shoulder. And I think that's a valid point, but it's, it's really funny. You know, you, you see all these people running a lot of 
meets and and it's it's just a, a, a ton of work you know and you wonder how much coaching they get in on that day and we go up to South Dakota State um, uh, in Brookings all the time they have a 300 meter indoor track now and but they but they host you know four or five or six indoor meets a year and it's 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 a lot of work you know to to do those things and I, I know you know it just uh, it's uh, it's 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 very uh, um, interesting how our sport functions at times mm-hmm. yeah and they do a great job it's one of my favorite facilities up there at South Dakota absolutely. State. So I'm glad you get to go up there. It's beautiful. Beautiful. They do a great job. So uh, as you continue transitioning, you get your degree. And, and I'm fascinated, by the way, and we haven't mentioned her name. You mentioned her. You mentioned you met your now wife as a freshman. Was she also a freshman? Or were you guys same year? Yep. Yep. Uh, Both freshmen. Samantha. Samantha. Because I know yep. Samantha's listening. Shout out to Samantha. Spouses of coaches don't get their due. I, I've, I've threatened to actually have a spouse as a guest one day to yeah, talk about yep. that aspect, but I think they would want some anonymity. We'd have to like do the, uh, the screen and, you know, change the voice and <laughs> get the real, the realness of being uh, yep. a, a, a spouse <laughs> of a track coach. Right? Um, so how, how did the transition go from graduate school and, you know, you've got Samantha with you some, somewhere along the way you got married. How was, you know, just, you know, you know it's one thing to be a coach and be a single coach, and what I mean by that is you had Samantha as a girlfriend, but being married, as you now know, is completely different. Uh, but it's one thing to be, you know, not married and be a coach and then be married and have a coach regarding the hours and responsibilities. How did that transition continue past graduate school? Yeah. So um, in real quick, you know, we married um, in uh, in the summer of 2010 and um, and then uh, she graduated in December that fall and I graduated in the following May mm-hmm. um, right before I started coaching here. But she she knew that she wanted to be an occupational therapist. Mm-hmm. And so she got into the graduate program at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion. So we spent the first two years actually living 90 miles away from each other. And so it was, it was, it was kind of a, and and so, you know, a lot of driving back and forth of, of seeing each other and that sort of thing. But for the amount that she was studying and how much time she had to put into that and the amount of time amount that I was working, it was, it was not a bad setup for the first two years of us, uh, of living in, uh, in different towns, you know, and, you know, again, we, you know, we, we traveled to see each other quite a bit and, and that sort of thing, but it was kind of a unique first two years of marriage, yeah. um, as we both pursued, you know, what we, uh, what we wanted to do. And so after she graduated in 2013 and, and moved back to Madison and got her, uh, first job, you know, then that, you know, that was again, you know, kind of another transition for, for mm-hmm. both of us. And, and, you know, she really seeing like, you know, how, how many weekends I'll be gone. And, and <laughs> it was also good for me to also realize, Hey, there's an aspect of this life that you need to, you know, balance and, and realize that it's going to be important for you to, you know, set your job aside for some times and, and come home or, or, you know, let's go do something on a weekend and not feel like you have to be, you know, working on this and working on that. And so I, I'm not perfect by any means. She's a, she's a great support supporter of, uh, you know, what I do and, and that sort of thing. But it was, uh, it was good for me, you know, to try to find some of that balance and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and realize, uh, you know, that, uh, you have to, you have to be able to, you know, mentally disengage. And, and that's a tough thing for coaches. You were always on the clock of saying, Hey, I need to be thinking about what's coming up next, or you're dealing with, uh, you know, trying to figure out okay, why can't I get this person to, you know, really break through in their performance? And, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, it's not good to be on the clock all the time. And, and, uh, and so that's something that a spouse is equally as, uh, uh, as equally important, you know, in her, in her role for me, you know, is, is, uh, is having, a uh, having that impact on me too. So, um, but yeah, you know, the, you know, uh, she, she moved back in 2013 and, and so then, you know, I really felt like, okay, I'm starting to get into the groove of coaching a bit and, and feel more comfortable. And, and you really, Really start thinking about okay how do we how do we progress you know the program too and in, in our recruiting and, and everything as well which has been uh, um, obviously the, the 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 focal point of uh, of what uh, what we do now I know we have the spoiler meaning you're here and you're the head coach yeah but after that two years you know you're doing grad work uh, a very unique situation with your wife doing uh, occupational therapy uh, as well so you're split and you're trying to figure out that whole dynamic you're trying to figure out I mean ha- your first two years of marriage you're just trying to figure yeah. out how, how in the world do I yep. be responsible for someone else and vice versa and make this partnership work and you're doing it with a 90 mile stretch in between you uh, and you're you know you're, you're getting your feet wet as a coach at, at what point 
and was there ever a point on the opposite side? Did you, did it hit you? And you're like, oh yeah, th this is, this is what I was built for. Like this, a lot of times in our profession, we get hit with the, oh man. And it sometimes it comes at like, because we win a conference title or a kid wins a big meet or something, we, we get caught up in the, 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 the great feelings of it. But it, was there ever a time where it was just like, oh my goodness, why didn't I start earlier? Like, why didn't I start as an undergrad coaching? Like, this is it. This is what I was put on earth for. And, and the opposite, was there ever struggles of like, man, I'm just not sure, you know, maybe I should be where my wife is occupational therapy and figuring out how to use my business degree so we can be together and start a family or, or whatnot, you know, and move on with the relationship that way. Yeah. And, and I, I've had, I've had both. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> You know, um, I to start on kind of maybe the negative uh, side of things, um, you know, my first four years coaching, uh, we had and, and I'm proud of every all the athletes that I've been able to work with. And and just, you know, uh, it's it's been such an awesome, um, you know, a, a job to have and people to work with have been absolutely, absolutely great, you know, and, and uh, um, I, I'm, I'm super, uh, you know, grateful for all the people I've got to work with. When I first started coaching here, we had some really, really good um, distance success, you know, uh, especially as you look on the conference and, and national level. And so I had some athletes that were well established in um, qualifying for NAI nationals and, and even becoming all Americans. And, and so I had some, you had some really, really, you know, uh, successful uh, individuals to work with. And um, so, you know, a few years after that, some of these graduate, I'm still trying to, you know, learn how to recruit. I don't feel like that's a strong point of mine. Mm. Um, I, I do the work. I still feel like, you know, uh, at that time, I'm like, I don't, I don't feel really, great about how I express, you know, what's important to me and, and, and why running here would be, you know, a good for you and that sort of thing. And that's something, you know, to continually work on. So, so I'd say, you know, we had some years where, you know, we didn't have the same recruiting class and, and, you know, just not as talented as, as an individuals. And, and so, uh, you know, your success, you know, kind of dips and wanes and goes ups and downs. And, and, and again, these are all great individuals that I got to work with and, and some, you know, really, really astounded you about how, uh, um, how much better you got, but we had some years in our, in our conference in the North star where we weren't placing very high at the conference championships. And, and that's, that was, you know, a time of like, am I, you know, where you reflect and am I doing a good job? Am I, am I cut out, you know, for mm -hmm. this, this college coaching world of things and, and, uh, and, and how do we, how do we do a better job uh, with what we have and, and how we, can we be successful? And, and then anytime any coach, you know, goes through um, uh, any sort of, uh, you know, uh, student athletes that, you know, maybe aren't working hard, or maybe there's, you know, uh, inter, uh, inter, uh, there's friction among, um, athletes that adds, you know, more, uh, more, uh, you know, uh, um, worries to the job. And, and so you have some experiences like that as a young, you know, 25, 26, 27 year old. And you're like, mm -hmm. how do we handle these things? So anyways, it's, it's life experiences. It's all things that people go through and you have to learn how to manage and deal with and properly, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, deal with and, and build the culture that you want to build. So, you know, there's some times in, you know, uh, uh, 2013, 2014, 2015, where, you know, you, you're wondering is, is this the right place for me? Is this the profession I'm supposed to be doing? I love so much of it, but there's times where, you know, you're not as successful as you want to be. And so you, you, you have self doubt. And so that, that is a time period where, you know, I, I certainly at times, you know, wondered, uh, about some of those things. And it was also kind of the time in my life where, you know, I was, I was really, really getting further away from my own competitive, uh, running. I, mm. I trained for a few good years, you know, to 2013 and, and, uh, you know, just, you know, kind of, kind of faded away on that aspect. So you have this chunk of your life where, you know, again, as we spoke before is it's kind of gone. And, and so I went some times, you know, through some times there where I did have some self doubt and wondering, uh, about, uh, about, uh, you know, what I'm doing and, and, uh, if this is what I'm supposed to be doing and, you know, but I didn't have, I never had a thought of like, well, this is what I should be doing instead. You know, this is where I should be. You know, uh, I, I, it's been a long time since I've looked at any other jobs, um, honestly, but you know, that was a time too, where I was like, well, maybe, maybe I should, you know, go and see if I can find another, you know, coaching opportunity mm -hmm. elsewhere. And, and, uh, um, you know, uh, but I, but I, I stuck here and I kept working at it and kind of in that same time frame, um, you, we, we got our new athletic director, uh, um, 
around that time in the 2014 range. And he's been here um, since then. And, and we've uh, had a new president as well. And a lot of good things has happened here at DSU. Our enrollment has continued to grow and our support for our programs have just um, really, really improved as well. So I felt like this was a place that was really building towards something as well. And, and so that's, that was kind of, you know, where there was a lot of uh, hope, you know, and, and um, it's, it's kind of funny to rely on the outside things to, to kind of feel that way. Cause I really feel like, you know, it's up to you to, to make your own success, but that's how, that's how, you know, we, we really kind of started turning some things around and mm -hmm. I feel like I've just improved and this, you know, staff has improved in, in our recruiting and we've been able to have a lot more, uh, you know, success. And funnily enough, you know, it's it, all those sorts of things are fun. And it's still about the individual who, you know, gets more out of themselves. That is really the most appealing thing. And that's, that's what it's always been, you know, but, uh, you know, sometimes you have those self doubts and those time periods where, you know, uh, um, you're not having as much of that and you're, you know, kind of wondering about those things, but yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, it's been a really, really interesting road, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, you, you know, what goes on in your own mind as a coach, but I, you know, you look back and, and and you, you might have regrets and, and you know, and, and how you handled something or, or what you did as a coach and, but who doesn't have, you know, things that they learn from. And, and so, you know, it's, it's been something that I really wouldn't change necessarily either. <laughs> well, I appreciate your openness and authenticity there. You know, it's hard to sometimes, especially when you, you know, you're being recorded by the way, and everybody, yeah, yeah. This, <laughs> it's hard to come on here and say, Hey, you know what? I, I don't know that I was that great of a recruiter to start out with. And, oh yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and then, you know, handle and all the things. And what, what you mentioned, you didn't say these words, but what you were describing there is something called imposter syndrome that yeah. we, we all get it with their, you know, we get it in our jobs. We get it as fathers, as mothers, uh, as kids in school. I've got a middle schooler. We all at some point in time, uh, that's an overstatement when I say all, oh, but a lot of us will experience that. Like, do I really belong here? Like, is, is I'm, am I really supposed to be a track coach? Am I supposed to be a, a, a sales professional? My son at point times with his Taekwondo and bands, like, am I really supposed to be doing Taekwondo? Like, I'm putting a yeah. lot of time in here. Is, is, you know, as, as he starts thinking about the future, is that really what I, I should be doing? Uh, and so I appreciate that openness and authenticity there. Because, you know, when you, you were telling, sharing your story there, you know, I think about there is a fine line between confidence and self-awareness. Yeah. Like you want to be confident as a recruiter and a coach, but you need to have some self-awareness of like, oh, well, I'm deficient in this area. So I need to do things to get better, or I've got to yeah. change this to become a better X, Y, or Z recruiter, husband, et cetera. So uh, it was just interesting as you're, you're expressing that. I was like, man, you know, recruiting, why would you, someone like you struggle recruiting? You're you, you know, you're personable. In fact, personality is one of the first things we talked about here today. You obviously have a, an enjoyment for the sport. Uh, you, you had success as a runner. You're at your alma mater. I, yeah. I, have a, I have a big place in my heart for alums who coach at their uh, alma mater because like when you go to recruit and you talk about how great your school is, the you have the ultimate proof. I went to school yes. here. Like I chose this yeah. school. That's how great this school is, you know? Uh, so, and it's like, oh, but I can see where it's like, you, you have the self-doubt of like, well, am I saying the right things? Am I expressing things the right way? Am I being true to myself, being true to the program, et cetera? And it, it's a little bit of that life experience. You just have to build on it and fail and get better and have successes and figure out why did you have a success so I can replicate it and, and just keep moving forward at, at every time. Yeah. And, and it's, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's something that as you, as you coach longer, you really, it really kind of starts to crystallize what is important to you as a coach and why you do what you do. And that's the best thing that I can talk about, you know, that I want to see you as an athlete be as successful as possible, certainly as a runner and as a student and really enjoy your time. And that forms, you know, the whole, you know, start of a conversation with, with an athlete. But early on, even if that's true, you know, I, I couldn't express that really well. And, and, and I couldn't, I couldn't like keep conversation going with, you know, someone who's more introverted and I felt, you know, kind of introverted myself. And, and so it was just, it was, uh, it was, uh, um, you know, it's a real process of kind of like being able to, um, uh, to kind of, uh, figure out, you know, uh, how, how, uh, how you pass on that information and show them that you're really passionate about, um, coaching and, and what's important and, and try to, try to be honest and, and truthful while still, you know, portraying uh, this as a great place, you know, to, to be, you know, and, and uh, that was, that was something that, you know, is, was, did not come easily to, to me necessarily, you know, and, and so, uh, and that's, uh, 
that's that's a big part of uh, this job. You know, it's a big part of uh, what you need to do. And and, uh, you know, some some place recruiting above, you know, even the coaching in, in terms of how you're going to get to be successful, you know, and, and I I think both are, you know, very important. But um, so that's that's something that, you know, it, is uh uh was 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 definitely something that I had to had to work on and and to get better at you know and um it uh and 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 when and also you know you talk about imposter syndrome the it's really easy to have a strong sense of confidence in the training that you're applying and, and how you are motivating athletes when things are going well. And when you inevitably have, you know, the rougher races or rougher seasons, that, that is something where it can be hard to feel that same confidence. You have that sense of, am I, am I doing the the right thing? And, and the, the point of it is, is there is going to be times that, you know, things don't go very smoothly despite having a well um, organized plan or, or, or maybe you did make some, you know, errors and you have to realize that too, you know, and, and that's, uh, um, that's something that I think as, as people get older, they might be more resilient or they learn how to be resilient and learn how to bounce back from things. And, mm-hmm. and that's something that, you know, you try to teach these 18 and 19 year olds to do as well. You may have a tougher race, but that doesn't indicate that you are just, you know, doomed for failure this year or whatever you are capable, you've put in the work. And, and so like, let's figure out how we can, you know, do things differently or, or adjust and change. But sometimes those words could be, you know, said to yourself and, and be just as useful. Right. Yeah. What, what a paradox to like, not, you know, you talk about having a bad race or a bad season, you know, things that go well of not questioning yourself, like having the doubt of like, am I, am I, is my training right? But yet on the other side, always questioning yourself, like how yeah. do I get better? Yeah. What, what what could I have done better? And the real paradox is, uh, the real hard choice here is, do you have those type of questions only when you have a bad race or bad season or whatnot? Yeah. But, but can you actually do that when you have a good race and a right. good season of like, Hey, what? So I know we won the conference title. We, maybe we, the, we hit the ultimate, we hit the triple crown and everybody PR, but what could I have done better? That's when it's yeah. really hard. Cause you're like, Oh, I shouldn't change a thing. Look what just happened. It was perfect. Uh, reality is it wasn't perfect. You could have gotten better. So how do you continually ask the questions of how could I have gotten better for the team? Even on a yeah, good year. It, Exactly. And, and you, you want to replicate what you did, but also, uh, you know, uh, it's, is it the Einstein quote that says, you know, if you're doing the same thing and expecting different results, you know, mm-hmm. that it's, it's insanity or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, that's, it's, 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 your, it's always going to be something that you probably need to evolve a little bit and change a little bit. And if I give two athletes the same exact training, there is probably a different response by each of them or impact on their their own fitness you know and so it's 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 constantly uh it's it's something where you constantly you know see what you can adjust and change and and do better but um that's that's where that's where i need to get out of coaching if i'm ever you know settling into well this is just how we've always done it let's just keep doing it that way well then i think it's probably time to you know uh, hang up the clipboard or whatever <laughs> the, the world's most dangerous statement well that's how we've always done things. exactly oh yep. man as soon as i hear yep. that i'm I'm like, all right, well, let me tell you, I'm automatically, I'm, yep. I'm on the defensive for you uh-huh. when I hear that. <laughs> so talk to us about this transition. We're talking about a time when you're, you know, the assistant kind of cross over cross country and eventually work into the head cross country coach. Well, you know, again, spoiler alert, you're now the head coach of track and cross country. How did that occur? And what, what, what do we, how do we get there? Yeah, um, I, I, I finished my master's in uh, the summer of 2013. Um, and uh, like I said, the longtime head track coach and cross country coach buzz, um, uh, you know, at that time, you know, um, you know, put in uh, for for me, you know, and, and pitch this to the university to the athletic director that um, I become the head cross country coach, and he would be the, the head track coach. And so I, I feel very fortunate that he had that trust in me and and felt like I, um, had earned that. And, and that was something that I was, uh, very, very appreciative of. And, um, so, so that was awesome. I got to start teaching some wellness courses here at uh, DSU, um, as well. And, and so, so that was great. And, uh, then, then he ended up retiring a, a year later and, um, he, uh, 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 had probably had some thoughts of, you know, maybe continuing for a few years, but had a wife who's health, you know, just needed some more care and that sort of thing. And so he, uh, um, he, uh, retired at that time. And, and so then, um, I was able 
able to become the head track coach then uh, before the 2014 um, season as well. And, and Buzz is always checking in on results and, and keeping up to date and all those things, uh, which is, which is awesome. But it was, uh, um, but just, just like me getting the assistant job in the first place, I, I feel very, you know, fortunate to have landed it. And for, you know, the people here at DSU to, to think that I was, was capable of, you know, and um, I, I owe this place a lot, uh, you know, with, with being able to run here and earn my education and had so many great teachers and professors and, and then the job opportunity, you know, and the, the trust, uh, you know, even, even when we had some down years in, in the conference, for example, that um, my athletic director had faith in, in uh, what we were doing and, and uh, we've been able to bounce back from that fortunately, you know, and so, um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's kind of handed up in the, um, you know, overall head position. And, and one thing I'll say, you know, about that is, you know, I was, um, you know, 25, 26 at that time. And, you know, having coached for a few years, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to, uh, to be in charge. You know, I, I think I could, I think I could handle this and do a good job. And, and, uh, um, you know, it, uh, it, it was, it was a learning process, just like getting, getting the assistant job in the first place and, and realizing the responsibilities that you have, even having seen, you know, this, this uh, coach next to me doing it every day, when, when you have to ultimately make the decision decision on things um, that becomes with a new uh, sense of uh, responsibility or even hiring assistants and, and evaluating individuals and, and all of those things, you know, that, uh, um, you know, is, is your responsibility when you're the head coach. And so that, that, that in itself, you know, was, you know, the next few years, you know, really trying to, you know, do what I can not to just to be a coach to these athletes, but to try to be a leader of a whole program and, and help my assistants have what they need to be successful and, and all of those things too. And so, um, I, I was really lucky to, you know, become a head coach at, at that age. And I, I wouldn't change, you know, the experiences that I had. Um, but I sure, I certainly learned a lot, you know, from, from going through uh, that type of, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, transition and job and, and everything. Yeah. I've got to give a big shout out to buzz here because, yeah. uh, uh, you know, one of my favorite questions, and I'm still going to ask it, uh, when coaches become their first time head coaches, were you prepared? <laughs> and typically the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> but, uh, our man buzz here, I'm just so proud of him for, you know, again, as an, un uh, as an undergrad, as a, uh, uh, assistant coach, giving you scheduling and, but like starting to get your feet wet yes. in that side of it, like, bravo, that's what prepares our young coaches or not even young. That's what prepares our assistant coaches to become more competent earlier head coaches like yes they can, the, from the jump they can be an effective head coach not you know stumble for the first season or two before yep. they get you know get their their rhythm going so i'm just so proud of that and then <laughs> to have the foresight to name you the head cross country coach nothing perturbs me more when the head track coach who's a sprints jumps throws whatever coach uh is also listed as the head cross country coach and so when the cross country does well and they named the, you know, the, the, you win and they named the head coach, coach of the year. And it's, it's the throws head coach. And it's like, well, yeah, come on now. And I know I'm not dismissing what you do as a head coach, and as a director, that's extremely important. But the person who was actually coaching the distance runners is that's really the coach of the, like that per, it's a different sport that should yes. be the head coach. So uh, again, shout out to buzz, man. That's some fairly forward thinking that does not happen commonly and definitely doesn't happen commonly enough in today's uh, collegiate coaching world man so well shout and, out to him. and it, yeah exactly it's it's something that um you know was 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 awesome you know to kind of get into those responsibilities and, and, and give me the responsibility, uh, you know, for it as well, you know, and something that really helped me, um, a lot. And, and even, even on that note too, you know, I, um, our throws coach, Alex Glover, he's been coaching here with me for, you know, nine years now. And, and, uh, um, we've had some excellent throwers and, and, uh, and, uh, um, you know, all Americans in, in recent years in, in, uh, discus and shot put and hammer throw. And, and it, it is, I, I, I tell my SID, it's like, you shouldn't put that stuff on my biography, mm -hmm. you know, because I, you know, I, I, I love those athletes, you know, and, and they're, they're people that I try to, you know, have an impact on, but I do not, you know, coach them to their success. Mm -hmm. You know, that's coach, coach Glover. And, and the same with our sprints and, and all of that too. And it's, but it's, it is, it's, it, it's, it's unique and it's hard, you know, for, for outside, you know, uh, sports related people to see that. Cause they, they don't, don't think of it like that, but you know, I, I view the program that I direct, you know, 
there is, there's multiple head coaches with their groups that they are working with. And I feel like it's my responsibility to, you know, try to mentor everyone and, and be a person that you can rely on and, and guide. But the coach Glover is coaching their head coach of the throws and, and coach Haugie and coach Williams are head coaches, of the sprints and so on and so forth, you know? And so it's, it's just, it's a unique sport in that sense. You know, it's, it's many sports in, in one sport. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm conflicted there. Cause on one hand, I was immediately agreeing with you when the, the distance, the head coach who's the distance coach in their bio, it's, you know, such and such thrower was a three-time all American. I'm like, uh, okay, well, yeah, you obviously, you know, you're the head coach. So you had to make the decision to give that kid a scholarship or not, or allow him on the team. And, uh, you certainly give the throws coach resources to do their job properly. So certainly there is some portion yeah. of their success yep. that you have. However, I know you weren't out there teaching them how to spin exactly. and throw yeah. and all that kind of yep. stuff. Right. <laughs> so uh, my immediate reaction was like, oh yeah, I'm hundred percent with you on this one. I agree with you. But then I started thinking about the baseball and basketball and football yeah. examples like I, you know, I'm thinking of yeah, you know, I coached at Mississippi State and we had a, a Hall of Fame legend head coach uh, uh, who, of course, his name escapes me right now, but he was a, he's a big dog. Uh, he's retired now. But, you know, he was the head coach. Right. And uh, I don't know what he actually coach. I'm sure they have a hitting. I know nothing about baseball, but I'm sure they have a baseball or a batting coach and a pitching yeah. coach. And I'm sure maybe there's an outfield coach. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, you read his bio and not only was it the team aspect like they finished first in the sec or they went to the world series like okay he's the head coach he gets those those credits but i know they had you know uh rafael Pomero went to school there like you know rafael Pomero was a 20-time all-american for coach coach polk that's who it was ron polk uh, -huh. uh and it's like okay but he wasn't the batting coach so there was another coach but i get why because it's in the sense of the program yeah yeah you know? and and i think for like football it's like you know using Brett Belima here at Illinois. It's like, you know, such and such quarterback did X, Y, Z. And I was like, well, I know you got a quarterback coach now. Cause I, yes. do, know, I do know in football, <laughs> they got a coach for everything. They got a, they got a tight ends coach, a defensive ends coach, <laughs> yep. uh, a right guard coach. You know, they got, you know, they got a coach for every single position out there for crying out loud. <laughs> yep. uh, so yeah, I'm kind of conflicted because it's like, okay, yeah. you oversee the program. You have to make a lot of decisions for the kids to be on the team and what level, and you got to support your, your, your individual head coaches. As you said, I love how you said that, you know, you get to support the throws coach and the jumps coach. So th there is a lot of uh, accolades for the, for the coach there, but, but it is, I, I think it's odd because we're so stats driven. So when you see throws, uh, you know, thrower three times all American with a school record of 60 feet in the shot. And it's like, yeah, but we know you didn't do a distance. Exactly. Yep. A, you know, <laughs> where it's like, you know, the quarterback throws for 5,000 yards or whatever. And it's like, okay, yeah, I, I know there's a quarterback coach, but sure. The head coach is the one who named him the starter or whatever, you know? So yeah. You're yep. conflicted there actually. I don't know, yeah. I don't it's uh, and, and it is very stats driven. You know, if it, if it said, you know, so-and-so athlete was an all American under, you know, uh, Anthony Dreeland's program, it's one thing, but, but yeah, you know, I, I didn't coach uh, Trey at a, you know, 14 meters in the shot put, you know, for any, <laughs> any sense of the world. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm very conflicted there now. I thought I had yeah. a very, I'm, I'm a very opinionated person. So I thought I had a, a yeah. very, now I'm conflicted. <laughs> I'll have, to, I'll have to put that in Twitter land and see what they, they think about that. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. So, uh, so my, my favorite question for every person who becomes a new head coach the very first time is, uh, were, were you ready? Were you prepared? And you seem to be one of the more prepared head coaches that we've had on the show here. Most coaches are like, oh yeah, I had no idea how to schedule. I had no idea how to budget. I didn't know you had to order equipment, blah, 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 blah. You seem to have had a lot of those experiences, so you get the, the quote unquote big chair. Was it easy peasy? You found your rhythm on day one because coach, uh, uh, Stevenson prepared you and mentored you so well, or was there some learning curves there? Yeah. The, the, I mean, the short answer is, is no, you know, and, and a lot of the things that, um, I, I had the responsibility to do as an assistant were, you know, things that, uh, I, I felt, uh, um, you know, comfortable with. So it's probably an easier transition than most, but, but being the ultimate decision maker or, or really making sure that everything, and goes well at our home cross country meet um, and having that full responsibility is is what I what I wasn't prepared for you know just to have that you know if if things go wrong you know it's up to you to make a change or fix or or whatever and that's that's I don't know if I don't know if you 
ultimately can feel, um, you know, completely ready for that and, until you've had some of that experience. And, and so maybe, maybe, maybe the answer is that, you know, it, it, I was as ready I was going to be, but I definitely, you know, in those first few years of, a, of being a head coach, you know, you, um, you, you have a lot of learning to do, you know, and, and uh, decisions to make and, and really, you know, kind of figure out how, how you need to be a good leader and, uh, and, uh, and hold people accountable and all of those different types of things. And so, um, you know, some of the little things, you know, is, is, are things that, uh, in terms of scheduling and all that, you know, are, are things that, uh, you know, I felt more comfortable with, but yeah, the ultimate responsibility of, uh, of the program, you know, falls on your shoulders. That, that is not something that I was like, yep, I'm, I'm super confident in what I'm doing right away. That, that took time. You know, if we admit to ourselves, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. You know, I, I'm not a very good planner, actually. Like I'm, I'm a much mm -hmm. better uh, freestyler. You know, if something comes, gets thrown at me from left field, I'm, I'm, I'm much better at figuring that out and making whatever needs to happen, happen off of that. Is that First, the nature of the podcast is, is, uh, is, is just freestyle it? <laughs> you know, that's a good point. Cause actually, as I was saying that, I was like, but God bless for this podcast, I have to be very scheduled because I'm dealing with yeah, your sure. schedule, yep. you know, so yep. I, and I've got to schedule out when I'm going to be on the road. I have to have, I already have them in the can and all that kind of stuff. So yep. it's, there is a lot of, 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 uh, there, but you're right. Uh, as anybody who, you know, for the alum guild connections, alumni that are listening right now, you know, you don't get pre questions yeah. uh, it's you you it, it, i'm always amazed anthony that you guys and gals that say yes to the podcast because it's really uh, what's the term i want to say here it's really black boxish meaning i don't tell you i basically tell you no. like, hey man we want to have you on here we're going to uplift and honor you we're going to talk about your story um see you thursday <laughs> yep <laughs> and, and there's no like uh okay like I mean, you kind of told me how long, yeah, like, you know, we haven't scheduled for a certain amount of time. So I kind of know how long it's going to be, but I don't know what questions you're going to ask me. No, I don't know if you're going to throw me curt. Like, are you going to try to uh, uh, sometimes, and I totally forgot to say this in our pre-interview. I always tell people like, Hey, this is not gotcha journalism. Like yeah, I ain't trying yeah. to I always tell people, I was like, I ain't trying to lose a customer over this thing, you know? So, so, uh, so there's a lot of trust, I guess is really what it is. It's like, man, you got to really trust that I'm going to kind of take care of you as the host here and, and, and guide you and make you look good that, which that's the easy part. Cause you know, no, no bad people ever make it to the show. So that's the, yeah. Part. But <laughs> anyway, what I was getting to Anthony, not hardly anybody ever turns it around and asks me questions. Man. That's, that's good. You're going to start a trend that I got to be careful with. Here. Yeah, definitely. But uh, so we both have our, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. Mine is more free flowing than being um, uh, actually buttoned up and, and, and organized when you like i'm always um, impressed when coaches like when they go to interview for a job and they come with like a book and they talk about like here's how i'm going to allocate uh, scholarships here is a schedule here's a but like they already like they come to the interview with that yeah as you moved into the head coaching role did, were, were you the organized type of like okay here's how we're going to change things but, but and, and here's my reasoning why or was it more of like okay i'm taking over something I'll move it incrementally better every season as we go along based on how things move along. Yeah, it was definitely the second we're moving incrementally. You know, I, I didn't have, um, an over, uh, you know, a huge, you know, 30,000 foot overview of, Hey, this is where we need to go. And what we need to do is it was definitely something it's, it was, you know, here's, here's what we can maybe, you know, change in the short term, but it, it, there was not a concrete plan. And part of what's been really interesting in my years here, um, you know, at Dakota state is, is, uh, that we've, we've just gone through, you know, some really massive changes in, um, support and, and it's been awesome. We've had had huge progress in um, the uh, um, uh, uh, progression of, of even our programs and degrees here, um, adding adding a lot of programs, you know, and, and construction of new buildings and, and now athletic facilities and an increase in um, scholarship um, support. So, so I came from the days of running and coaching where we were a little bit leaner, leaner, I would say, in, in support. And so that has been a, a really wild um, transition in my own mind in saying, 
okay, now I have additional, you know, scholarship dollars to work with, right. you know, where can we take this and what can we do? And it's been good and bad because I, I have, I, I feel very, very blessed and lucky, you know, to have these new resources to work with, but I also have to change my mindset a little bit of, Hey, this is, this is maybe what, you know, should be allocated to, you know, these types of athletes versus what we did in the old days. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, and you're recruiting another level of athlete potentially too. And, and, so it's it that kind of comp pounds the learning process for me and just that it's changed a lot in, in my time here. And, and it's been awesome changes, but you know, you, you kind of have to get out of the, the, the mindset of, uh, um, well, like, you know, we, we got to make every, you know, dollar really last until, uh, until you can, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, get what you need to get and that sort of thing too. And so, um, but, but anyways, you know, back to your original point, um, that's been kind of the process of like figuring out where the program can go to, because the expectation are a lot higher now you know mm -hmm. we went from you know uh being at near the bottom or at the bottom in the conference uh, cross country championships and, you know, 2015 or whatever to now being able to, you know, win a few in the row in the men's side and, and place really high on the women's side. And, and so that expectation has grown, which has been great, but it, to say I had this, you know, grand plan to get there was, would not have been true at all. You know, we just tried to take it or incrementally and, and with that increase in support really tried to change what we thought was possible too. Yeah, the real amazing people, the unicorns are the people who are super organized, but also can bend. So when that thing that they, that you couldn't predict occurs, they just course correct right back into their their plan. It's really, like I said, it's unicorn stuff. It's it's not a, there's a, it's the 1% of the 1% people out there. Yeah, yep. You know, a lot of people, and there's a lot of people listening right now that, you know, they want to be a, a college head coach. Maybe I should change that. They think they want to be a college head coach because, you know, we just don't know what it is until you get there and you realize it ain't, you know, this ain't the easiest job or the funnest job sometimes in the world. You did it at such an early age uh, in the mid twenties there for you. Who do you, were there, and, and you still had uh, coach Stevenson there as the, to bounce off. Were there other people, other mentors in this role as a head coach that you've been able to kind of pick the brain of, so to speak? Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, um, I had, I had a few different distance coaches, as I mentioned before, you know, when I was running here that coached me and those were always individuals that I could rely on and, and pick the brain of. Um, and then also, you know, head coaches here at DSU and other sports, mm -hmm. um, that, that, uh, were very helpful in many ways, um, uh, as well, uh, you know, a, a softball coach from several years ago, um, uh, Ken Prorick was one where I got to know really well and, and, uh, bounce ideas off of our current women's basketball head coach. Uh, David Mo, they've made a, a couple of national tournaments in a row now and been really successful. I really, really appreciate his his insight and how he runs his program. And we have a lot of dual sport athletes together, actually, women's basketball players, and then run outdoor track. And so we're, we're always recruiting together uh, and too. But um, you know, that's another individual that I I just really uh, you know can appreciate uh, um, you know as well and learn uh, learn a lot of. And uh, I will also say you know as I, I'm 34 now and I, I really have hopefully grown and I know I've, you know, grown and gotten better at this, but you know, my assistance in really, really, trying to make sure that I um, not just listen to, you know, their thoughts, but, you know, try to take some of their advice. And, you know, there's a give and take in that sometimes, you know, I have to make decisions that, um, you know, they might not know the information of, or, you know, they don't necessarily agree with. But on the flip side, a lot of times they have really good insight into maybe what's a good idea and those sorts of things too. And when you're an assistant coach, you know, you might even have better insight into some of the athletes thoughts or what they're dealing with over me as the head coach. And so those are always, you know, uh, people and, and, and friends and, and coworkers, you know, that uh, I, I really start to realize that, hey, you know, don't don't disregard, you know, uh, their thoughts and, and uh, you know, I can take into consideration and. And that's what I think I've gotten better at over the years is, hey, if we have a decision to be made and I want some input, well, like, let's sit down and say, hey, what do you think about this? You know, or, or what do you think about this situation? And, and take that into play, too, because they're here, they're in the program, but they might even have a better insight into a particular athlete, for example, or, or you know, what would be useful or that sort of thing, too. So those are, you know, hopefully all people that uh, I've I've been able to uh, um, reciprocate uh, some help to, you know, but uh 
um, have been, have been great, uh, um, people that have guided me too. Some of us want to become a head coach for the control factor. We think we can control more, et cetera. And, you know, you have hindsight now, you might not have appreciated it, but when Buzz was giving you different aspects to oversee, that was his way of relinquishing control. It's like, oh, I can, you know, I'm going to trust you to do X, Y, and Z. I told you to put a pin in that. Yeah. How are you doing as a head coach now with your assistants? You know, you, now you've got the control. You can either do it all or yep. you can delegate that famous word. How are you doing with your assistants and delegating and, and really preparing them for potentially uh, maybe not head coaches? Maybe they will become head coaches either there or elsewhere, but even just better assistant coaches. How are you doing in that aspect? It- it's definitely something that I've, I've gotten better at, you know, even opposed to, you know, four or five years ago, but I, um, you know, I, I, even last year in evaluating and having the discussion with one of my assistants, you know, he told me, Hey, I can, I can, I can help out more with this, or I can do more with this. And that's just a sign to me that, you know, we have, we have coaches who are willing and able and want to learn these things. And, and those are, those are things that I have to even continue to do better on. So the, the, the truth of it is, is it can be, it can be something that I, that I improve on. And, and that's, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. Um, I think, you know, the, the control and the, you know, doing things, uh, um, you know, I, I kind of view it as, Hey, I'm the head coach and it's my responsibility to do these things, not as much of the control, or maybe, maybe that's my ego talking and it is, it is that way. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, you also have to, you also have to, um, you know, delegate those things and realize that that, you know, if you, if you do a good job of working with your assistants and helping them along, they could do just as well or even better with something. And that helps them as a professional too. Yeah. I think sometimes we, we don't want to delegate and help someone get better. Cause we're afraid of like, well, man, what if they leave? You know, what if I prepare them mm-hmm. to be a head coach and they go and leave? Well, for sure. Coach? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm reminded there's this, uh, it's, it's kind of in the business world. I don't know if it's actually made it into the <laughs> coaching world where we talk about the same thing with our own professional development with our, our people here. And it's like, man, I want them to become better because they will be better servants for our coaches and our dealer network, et cetera. And it's like, well, what if you train them up? You spend all this money and time into them. They leave. And, I, and you know, the, the flip side of that is, well, what if I don't, you know, so they don't get better and they stay. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, so I, I'll keep the person, you know, low and not educated, not better. But that means that person's going to be on your team. That's, that's not good. We want them to continue to improve and get better so they can do their jobs and uh, passions better. Yeah, you know, even reading uh, one of Mike Shashevsky's books um, from Duke, he he always talked about hiring people who want to be a head coach someday, mm. because those are going to be people who want to learn all the ins and outs and and do a good job. And um, <clears throat> so uh, that's something that you know I, I remember that kind of like hitting me in the head. You know, when I read the book, like, well, that makes a lot of logical sense. Mm. So that's something that you know you should try to work your own assistance into. You know, and and uh, and take upon that responsibility. That's interesting. You mentioned Coach K, that icon, and I immediately thought of another icon, Nick Saban, because yeah. you know, he's always hiring people. I mean, look how many head coaches came from yeah. history. Uh, how many head coaches that get fired? Which, by the way, that's the best college job you can have is a fired college football coach. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Give me 15 million to go away. Uh, th- there was a funny, um, you know, Ed Orgeron. Like, I saw his quote. Yeah. Where he was like, when do you want me to leave? And what door do you want? Me yep. To yep. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> and I have no doubts. He actually said that to the AD. That just sounds oh, like for his, sure. his personality, but, um, but you know, Nick hires a, a lot, you know, I'm on a first name basis with him. So Nick yes. uh, hires yeah. a lot of, uh, you know, former head coach and they talk about, re- you know, he re- rehabilitates them, which, you know, I don't buy into that, but, uh, but he has all these people and it's like, well, man, you're surrounding yourself with former head coaches, uh, people who want to be head coaches. Yep. And you're like actively bringing them in. Like, it's almost like, man, is, is that, is that the secret sauce? Like right. you surround yeah. yourself with the great people. And yes, they may leave. But because of that success, you'll 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 attract other successful people yeah. to be in your program. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Anthony, as we start to wrap up uh, here today, you know, it's it's amazing. Again, I told you I have just such a soft spot in my heart for um, alumni who coach at their alma mater. As we start looking into, you know, we're in the middle of cross country season here in 2022. We've got this a great track season coming up here in 2023. What's got you excited for Dakota State and your program? 
Um, well, you know, right here in the, in the here and now, um, I, I think both our men and women have, have an opportunity to, to, to win a conference title in cross country. And so we're obviously working towards that. Uh, we have to go up to Dickinson, North Dakota in November for a conference. So, you know, could be beautiful, could be snowy, but, um, I've been, I've been exceptionally proud of, of, uh, our, our team this fall. They've been working really hard and they've been, they've been running well. Um, and even above and beyond that. It's, it's just this group seems very exceptional in their um, connection with one another. And we've had great teams that, you know, are, are really, really close knit. But we have a great group of upperclassmen who have just done a phenomenal job of, of creating that type of uh, culture. And so very, very uh, proud of that. And, and that's really kind of, you know, all across our, our track team. So we're striving towards that right now. And, and then um, we had a really, really good recruiting class in uh um, in track as well. And, and a lot of uh, um, throwers actually uh, that are going to be that are working with coach Glover. So that depth is going to be um, better than ever. And so again, we're, you know, for, for track, you know, we're hopefully striving to win a few uh, conference titles as well. Um, we have a, uh, another two years of uh, being the host institution for the NAI indoor national championships. Mm. And we've hosted that the past few years at the South Dakota to state facility right. um I, I think so, of south dakota state is the host but that's right yeah You're the actual yeah yeah so yeah tell yeah me so, more about so yeah that. we work with think about that yeah yeah we we work with obviously sdsu uh um uh, staff up there and and everything but that's been you know just an extraordinary awesome learning experience for for us you know uh, to be able to host and try to do a good job at that and and it's been it's been really awesome for our athletes that qualify you know because we race up there so often it's it's just a it's a great uh, place to go run nationals uh especially for us you know and and so that's been a lot of fun so we're really excited uh, for that as well T tell me more about that because i it's so funny you mentioned south dakota state and i immediately i knew nai nationals were there and i just think of them as being the host but they're yeah. not nai what what you, what's your responsibility like uh, you, we talked about you know hosting like a conference championship and you know you got to do more fire putting out than actual coaching w what's the role of you and your staff and dakota state at south dakota state for for the nationals. Yeah. So we, um, we, uh, our, my athletic director really spearheaded this to, to, to bid for it. And, and he's been the one instrumental in, in finding sponsors and in that sort of aspect of it. Um, and then we, uh, we, we do hire an outside meet director and then I and, and, and our uh, um, staff work really closely with him for everything meat management related, you know, everything that goes into uh, the meat. So, you know, we're, we're helping hire, uh, hire officials, you know, find, uh, um, uh, you know, lodging for them and, and make sure that they have everything that they need um, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, d doing a great job as well as everything. Um, and then we actually work with some of the SDSU staff and even some of the coaches um, to just make sure the facility is, is ready to go. And, and that's all prepared there as well. So there's a, there's a lot of different, uh, um, you know, people that are involved with it, but, you know, we're, we're really doing everything on the meat management side of, of helping out, you know, and making sure that um, from an officiating standpoint and, and the team standpoint, they get where they need to go and, and, uh, and have the resources that they need and, and everything regard to that. So, so you're busy. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> you're doing that and running a program and coaching and, you know, supporting your staff. Holy cow. You know, the great part about the national championships, as opposed to maybe running your, you know, uh, small home meet is that you have a ton of interested officials mm -hmm. in, is in officiating. And of course we have a budget for that and, and, uh, um, and, and pay them. So that's, that's, it's, it's certainly a lot of work, but you know, in, in, in comparison to like us hosting a, you know, a home meet here in Madison where you're, you know, really searching for volunteers and that mm. sort of thing. It's not as bad as, as that, because you have so many people interested in, you know, either uh, being hired to fish or even volunteering that you have a, you have a lot of help. And, and on, then our athletes as well, you know, the ones who don't qualify, you know, we usually have them help out too, you know, and it's great um, experience too. So it's, it takes some organization, but uh, there's, there's really a lot of interest in, uh, you know, being part of it, which is, which is awesome, of course, and, and makes, uh, makes it uh, pretty smooth. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I never even thought of, like I said, I always think of South Dakota state and then you think about, oh yeah, well, they're not any ice. They can't be the host institution. That's amazing. So, cause so much goes into it, you know, we're the NCAA equipment sponsor. So we, you know, do D1, yeah. D2 and D3 and, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're, you know, maybe one of the more visible cause it's 
easy to see the hurdles and the pits and all that kind of stuff, but we're this much of the champion. We're so tight. You know, it's hundreds, almost thousands of athletes, hundreds of coaches, lodging, you know, travel. I mean, there's so much to put yeah. on these championships. It's it, marketing so for tickets. Say, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing what goes in. Same thing at the NEI championships of getting all these teams from around the country into this place. And then being able to have the meet run off as not as smooth as possible, but run the meet off smooth so that people all have a fair chance to do their best yeah. and let the, the points lay out where they go, man. It's quite a feat. Really. And is. that's the most important thing is that, you know, it's a national championships and these athletes have the opportunity to, you know, go out and do what got them there and, and perform well, you know, and that's, that's, that's something that's great with our, our meet director and um, our officiating staff. They, they know that that's, that's inherent, you know, into what they're all about is, is putting on a meet for the athletes and, um, that's, that's really what it comes down to, you know? And so it's, uh, it's been really cool to be a part of that and, and, and really great from a learning experience, you know, as a coach too. Well, you got, yeah, right. That's you didn't think that was ever going to be on your resume, huh? No, no absolutely not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> well, I tell you, you know, I appreciate what you guys do for the NAI championships and what South Dakota state does. You know, it's, you can't sleep on the NAI, you know, it cause you, you can't sleep. You, you, you lie awake every night thinking like, how in the world am I going to win an yeah. <laughs> NAI conference and win an NAI, an NAI national t- title and trophy? Uh, you know, you go and look at the results on a yearly basis and it's like, man, you got to bring your a game yeah to win this thing and to win a trophy this it's a it's no joke and it's coming down to the four by four and the uh the marathon points added in there and everything it's it's quite an amazing feat so it's you know the nea uh level is um it's just a different level you know i don't i don't rank it where d1 d2 d3 it's it's people men and women like you uh getting after it with uh young people 18 to 22 year olds around the country and around the world making them better getting them all to do their best that when it counts the most man it's it's quite a feat it's really amazing you know and and i will say personally you know me running at the nai level and not having been exceptional out of high school i had the the best coaches that i could ask for people that genuinely cared and knew a lot about the sport and, and guided me a long ways. And you see that in the high school realm of things, and you see that in the professional realm of things. And the great thing was that, you know, I looked at the NAI nationals, something that might be achievable someday and, and I could get to, and, and I was fortunate enough to do so and, and, uh, and run at some national meets, but man, you look at, look at the indoor national championships from last year at SDSU and some of the times that were uh, posted, it's, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher. And, and uh, um, you know, uh, that is, that's a pretty eye opening. you know, even for our really successful freshmen, it's like, whoa, I got to run that to get to nationals. And this is what it takes to be an all American it's uh it's it's really 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 competitive you know and so it's uh it's pretty cool to see you know when coaches talk about how hard it is to make nationals no matter which national is i just look back at that i was like well you know it's your fault right like if yes you weren't, if you weren't <laughs> such a good coach <laughs> it'd be much easier to make it here it's like you guys have your own self to blame for this one <laughs> yep absolutely <laughs> Well, man, Anthony, uh, thank you so much for being here today. You know, one of the most valuable things you can ever give us is your time. And, you know, you're right in the middle of cross season. You're trying to win conference titles. It's never a good time (laughs) to do this. Uh, So I'm always amazed when, you know, you guys and gals say yes and and join us here on the podcast. I'm just so thankful uh, really for your openness and authenticity. You know, um, it's really interesting to see your background as a head coach at such a young age. Uh, It's going to be really interesting. Like I'm a big long-term thinker. Like I'm, you know, I'm thinking 10, 15, 20 years out ahead every day. So I'm really interested and excited to see, you know, as a mid 30 year old guy, which, you know, it's like, it's so, pre- you're like a little pup. It's like, oh, you're 34, <laughs> man. Come on. I, I was barely into my third career as 34 year old, you know, uh, but you got such deep experience as a 34 year old. What's it going to be as a 44 and 54 and 64? <laughs> like it's, I, I know it's hard sometimes for you to see, cause you're in the muck every day with this, but my man, here's what's so exciting to me is you know, using a 400 meter dash as an analogy, you are barely at the starting line. I know sometimes it feels like, man, I've, uh, I'm, you know, I'm on the downside of my career. I'm 34. I'll probably be retired when I'm 65. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm peaking and going down. No, no, you're barely at the starting line. 
you know, with, with modern technology, you're going to coach to your 70, 80, 90 years yeah. old. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but if you think about it this way, you know, you started coaching at 22 ish, right? So you've been coaching for 12 years. Let's just use easy numbers, right? Uh, you've been coaching for 12 years. You're going to, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to retire. You, you check the stock market, you're going to be able to retire to at least yeah. 65. That's at the earliest, right? So that's 30 more years. That's two and a half times more than you've been coaching today. Yeah. That's why I say, man, you are, you're not even, you think you're at halftime, brother. You ain't even at the starting line. So it's going to be so exciting to see this next decade, the decade after it, uh, what you get accomplished, the people you surround yourself with, the accomplishments that you have at Dakota State, and, and, and just bigger and better things that you're going to continue to grow into and lead, whether it's one day you're the athletic director at Dakota State for crying out loud. So it's going to be so fun to see, you know, kind of do a check-in with you uh, here in the future and just see, you know, your story continues to grow uh, and where that leads us to, man. So I'm just so so excited for you. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. And, you know, as, and, and by no means, uh, do I, uh, you know, have a, a, a really great philosophical, uh, philosophy on, on life, but you do kind of realize you don't really know what you don't know. And so it's, it's definitely, you definitely realize as a coach, so you're probably going to be a bit better in two years and even better in four years. And, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully I can keep improving uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the profession. And, uh, um, but, uh, but yeah, thanks for having me. And it's been, uh, it's been awesome. I'm going to give you your philosophy. I heard someone say, I can't remember who it was. I'm sure it was someone famous. They said, you know, at the end of the day, we're all making it up as we go along. Yeah, and, and that's really true. Whether you're a 70 year old, you've been doing the profession for 50 years, whatever. Well, it's different today than it was yesterday. So we're all making it up as we go along, making the best decisions that we can using the experience, using the mentors, the people that have poured into our lives, using our goals and our passions to drive those decisions. So there's your philosophy. You're just making it up every day, man. Yeah, the good news absolutely. Is, is you are making a lot of good decisions and that's <laughs> really where success comes from, man. So thanks again for being here today. And thank you for being here and listening, man. I'm just always so humbled and honored that people come back weekly. We do this every week and we don't make this easy on you. This ain't a 15, 20 minute podcast. We're uh, past the hour and a half mark here and you're still here. And I think that is a real, real testament to the men and women that we have here on the podcast. So, you know, we're, we're in um, October 31st, we're getting to November, we're getting close to ending our third season. And guess what? We're going to keep making it up as we go along. We're going to continue and improve. We've already got season four on deck got some great surprises, new things coming for you. We're always going to try to evolve and get better just like you do out there in the coaching world. So thank you for being here today. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with someone, you know, the experience that Anthony has and the you know ups and downs that he's had. Th those are important things for other people to hear. There's, there's a little bit of the, you know, just knowing that other people go through some of the same stuff that you do. And so hearing these people, hearing these stories being shared, that's important to help our continue uh, moving our profession forward professionally, uh, salary wise, happiness, fulfillment, et cetera. So share it with someone that you think might uh, enjoy it and get some value out of it. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. We're going to do it all over again and have another amazing person into the hot seat and they have no idea what questions I'm going to ask. So see you next week and thanks a lot. Have a good one.